Hello and welcome to this CUBE conversation. We're focused on hybrid cloud and an evolving partnership between Dell and Nutanix. I'm Dave Vellante with Rob Strecce of the CUBE Research. The changing dynamics in the market for virtualization infrastructure really has created new opportunities for expanded partnerships. And moreover, with AI at center stage and a cloud operating model as a mainstream requirement, Dell and Nutanix have announced a new collaboration specifically related to Dell's PowerEdge XC Plus and integration of PowerFlex software to find storage into the Nutanix stack. Now Dell claims the XC Plus brings a new level of simplicity in getting started with Nutanix on PowerEdge by allowing customers to order and have delivered the Nutanix cloud platform already installed in the system. But the bigger news is the ability to now use PowerFlex software defined storage with Nutanix allowing organizations to scale storage and compute separately in their hyper-converged infrastructure. So we're here to look at a number of issues. Let's start, Rob, with why should customers care about this? Yeah, I, I think why they should care is that being able to scale compute and storage separately has always been uh, a desire. And I mean, again, I think that Nutanix and Dell customers are probably sitting there clapping at home saying this is, it's about time uh, for this. And I, I think that with the PowerFlex and beyond as they evolve that storage stack as well. I think that when you see also the XP Plus or XC Plus will allow them to get up and running in quicker time to ROI while they determine if they need to go beyond that with the PowerFlex software defined storage. So now you can go, you know, very, uh, I guess you could say from a scale up or a scale out perspective. And that's going to be key as people look at these infrastructure modernization projects or things like AI out at the edge, especially where you're talking about maybe I want to bring RAG or something like that out to the edge, I may need a lot more, a deeper storage layer, but you know, keeping the compute about the same. So you don't have to necessarily scale out to scale up as I mean, well. If it sounds so simple, is that the whole separation, being able to scale compute and storage separately, uh, you, you explain this, you used to have to put in a new cluster, you, you'd have to buy compute and storage, even if you didn't need the storage or you didn't need the compute, you had to take it and figure out what to do with it or it becomes underutilized. This really is the instantiation of the cloud operating model now coming to hybrid infrastructure, isn't it? Right, and I, I think what it happens is that everybody wants that easy button for AI and they've been looking at this and it used to be that stair step. Every time you wanted to get more storage, you had to buy more compute. I think what this allows people to do is do it in a much more uh, managed way and this way they're not hitting that stair step as often, uh, which, or they can do that, but for the reasons of bringing new workloads on, which again is helpful to both companies from that perspective. Okay, so we've talked a lot on the, our program about the market dynamics changing as things like the Broadcom acquisition of VMware and the explosion, of course, of Gen AI applications. Rob, how has this affected Dell and Nutanix customers? Take that point of view, please. Yeah, I, I think again, and uh, we'll bring up slide one, which really shows that Nutanix, you know, about a year ago in October of uh, 23 was uh, down in, you know, double digits, but much lower uh, percentages than they are today. And they actually, between October and April, they basically over doubled. Uh, in their, what we call is at their net score. So their, their momentum within the market. And you could see that that probably, you know, aligns with things like acquisitions and transitions of VMware uh, and that technology. But what is also amazing is they almost doubled again going quarter to quarter from April to July, which just shows that that momentum is continuing to go. And I think that really brings a lot to Dell, and I think that is why it's exciting. So this data is from our partner, ETR, Enterprise Technology Research. They do a quarterly survey uh, called TSIS, the Technology Spending Intention Survey of approximately 1,800 IT decision makers. And essentially, as Rob said, net score is a measure of spending momentum, which tracks the percent of customers, essentially, that are spending more when you net out those that are spending less. And you can see here in the yellow, the July survey, the rapid, ascendancy of uh, that net score uh, into the 
you know, 40s, four yeah. into the 40s. High, Any, high 40s. Anything above 40 percent is considered highly elevated. And if we go to the next slide, you can see here, Rob, once you set this up, what's happened yeah. in the last, you know, 18 months or so. So I think what was amazing is I went and looked at Dell in Dell accounts and how Nutanix was growing within Dell accounts. And you can see that within those shared accounts, Nutanix's net score went from, you know, again, low single digits to all the way up to over that 40% magic mark in those accounts. So there's a lot of momentum as a joint selling as well. So they have a lot of joint customers that are going to market already that are gonna be able to take advantage of this new PowerFlex system and the way that they buy the XC Plus but it's, it's going to bring more, I guess you could say, uh, I think momentum to these joint customers as well. This is a remarkable ascendancy in net score. I mean, we cover this stuff very uh, closely with our partners at ETR. And again, it, it really is measuring the percentage of customers that are adding new plus the percentage of customers that are spending 6% or more. And then it subtracts out those that are churning and those that are spending 6% or worse. And then that you subtract the, the, the negatives from the positives and you get the net score. That's what we're seeing here. So again, it's really important to understand this is percent customer penetration. It's not an indicator of dollars spent, but it certainly is a harbinger of, of momentum and it's forward looking. Uh, that is a tremendous uh, 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 yeah. progress that Nutanix is, is making. Yeah, and I, I think, accounts. and I think again, there was over 500 accounts that were part of Dell uh, as, as part of that. And you saw that uh, Nutanix was in 145 of those. So you can see, and that was growing rapidly, which is pretty amazing when you start to look at how big Dell is and from a, a distribution perspective and how popular uh, this platform, the PowerEdge platform is in those customers as well. So where do you see this all going from here? I, I see that this is really going to help organizations as they look to do more cloud operating models. So cloud, you know, we always say this is, is not a place, it's an operating model. And when you start to look at where Nutanix has all the way from hyperscaler to on-prem to colo all the way out to the edge, this is where we see a lot of applications that are cloud native in, in origination and virtualized. So you still have a lot of virtualized applications out there. A lot of, you know, SQL Server, as we've talked about, is still a very popular database out there. So you still have some of these traditional IT applications where they're modernizing all the way out to the edge to get closer to their consumers of that data of those applications. I mean, one of the things that I like to say is, you know, again, when you're putting Gen AI out and you're doing inference at the edge and people have to interact, you're interacting, milliseconds kind of count at that point. You know, having seconds going back to a cloud data center or back to a on-prem data center may not be as much. And you may want to get out there and put the data where the consumer is consuming that data. You know, we've talked for years now about how the, the, the cloud, the definition of the cloud is expanding. You talk about the operating model. It's not a, a, a place, it's a model and it's expanding to on-prem. We're clearly seeing that out to the edge and to your point, latency matters. Yeah, and I think again, ease of use and ease of management, which H, you know, the HCI, the hyper-converged infrastructure has been focused on for over a decade now. Uh, you start to look at that and you know, Nutanix was really one of the first in on that and pushed that kind of the OG of uh, you know, hyper-converged. And I think that has given them a way to be able to really tie into how people have been doing in hyperscale clouds and make it that simple. Uh, and I think just the way that now you can purchase it has really taken it to that next level of simplicity as well. Rob, thanks for the insights, appreciate it. Thank you. Our bottom line assessment is for Dell customers, this move gives them more optionality and choice and for Nutanix it further taps one of the industry's most powerful sales and service channels on balance. This is a win-win. We're going to watch the ETR spending data over time and the signals from our community as always. You can count on us to keep you up to date on the progress. Thanks for watching this CUBE conversation. This is Dave Vellante for Rob Strecce and we'll see you next time.